And coming up on this episode of the Marty Mariner Show, well, it's episode two of our end of season specials and what a lineup we have in store for you for your viewing pleasure. Kicking things off, here's the Central Coast Mariner CEO. Sean Millencamp joins us for a bit of a chat, a bit of a chinwag, a little bit of a conversation following him. Well, this guy, I think, has had his best ever season in a yellow and blue shirt. Storm Rue joins us for a bit of a chat. And then one guy who is just as elusive off the field as he is on the field, Josh Nisbet joins me. And we're going to talk all things about, obviously, the grand final and also green and gold shirts. Where are they, Graham Arnold? We'll put the question to Nizzy and see what he says. Massive thank you to those who've uh, subscribed to the channel over this last month. We've had a, a massive rise, which has been totally fantastic. I really, really appreciate you all. For those that haven't yet, we invite you to do so. The little button in the corner there, if you click on there, it'll show you the easiest way to subscribe to the channel. And don't forget, you can hit a notification bell. lets you know when the uh, new shows are up. And trust me, we are going right through the off-season. We have some uh, absolutely amazing uh, interviews coming up over this next month or so. I'm really excited about it. And don't forget to hit the like button. It uh, apparently does something to an algorithm which lets people know that we have a little old Central Coast Mariners channel here and uh, it helps uh, people find us a, a hell of a lot easier, apparently. So go figure. It's uh, whatever Mr. YouTube says. Sounds good to me. Let's not keep the uh, the guys waiting. They're all in the green room and the CEO has stuck his hand up. He said, I'm up first. Let's do this thing. It's going to be an absolutely massive show. Let's kick it off. It's the Marty Mariner Show. Welcome back to the Marty Mariner Show. And, well, we rolled out the last the red carpet last week for uh, for Richard Pearl. Well, we better crank it out again because it's the CEO of the Central Coast Mariners. Sean Millicamp joins us, mate. How are you doing? Yeah, going great. Going great. Thanks for having me on. And uh, apologies, I took a short break, so I couldn't get on a bit quicker. <laughs> That's all right, mate. It was a, it was a well-deserved break. And, and, and speaking of which, did... Uh, did you actually get a chance during the break just to take it all in just for a little bit? Because it's just been a, a hell of a ride, hasn't it? Yeah, I did actually. So no, it's uh, it was definitely one to stop and smell the roses and um, and enjoy it with a you know with, with a few good friends and uh, and make sure that uh, that I took a moment to spend some time with the family and and do all that. So it's uh, it's always nice to have those little moments to, to stop and breathe. But uh, pretty quickly, it was uh, football never sleeps, so we get straight back into it. Absolutely, man. It's a it's a it's a train that never stops running. That's for sure. Just um, obviously, we'll talk about the grand final and all that in a second. I just want to go back just to a, a couple of weeks before that. The uh, the semi final against Adelaide, uh, twenty thousand and fifty nine people in the stadium. We've all been there when there's been a hell of a lot less than that. Was there a time where you took a moment during that game pre kickoff to look around and just the heart got beating just that little bit faster? It must have just been a great sight for you guys. Yeah, it was. It was, and um, yeah, I think I, I think I think I did take some moments that were there to, to make sure we enjoyed, it. and I, I really expressed that to all the staff that was there to, um, um, to to find their moment to just just you know stop and reflect and have a look and 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 soak it in really because because uh, that was important. But then pretty quickly also wanted to keep pushing and going. All right, what can we learn from this? How can we make sure that we understand uh, what we did that made it so successful and uh, and do it again? And of course take notes as to what we can do better next time. There was, there's always room for improvement. And, uh, uh, and, and yeah, there were some really key, key interesting moments uh, that, that sort of, sort of come through the night, but uh, with, with so much energy in the crowd and, uh, and just, you know, that's uh, it becomes a bit of an art form trying to actually fill the stadium. It's very easy to, to have a, um, to close ticket sales and not have a, have a complete sell out the way that we did. And, um, and yeah, just managing the whole venue was, was a credit to, to everybody who worked that night from, from Kath at the stadium and all the, you know, all, all the contractors, but in particular, all the staff and, and, and of course the, the players in the coaching department put on an absolute show on the field. And, uh, and yeah, it was a night that will never be forgotten in the history of the club. 
No, hundred percent. And I mean, I know you, you you spoke about it even post grand final. Th- those days during COVID, where you, you've mentioned, and I remember talking to you at the time, like just being the only person in the office. That 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 was a very personal thing. Did that add to that night? Did it feel like it had been a little bit of a personal journey in a in a sense? Yeah, I really wish I could just pick up the phone and call myself from five years ago and yeah. and, and tell myself it's going to be all right and have a look at where we are now because. Because at the time you just don't know. You really just don't know what's what's happening. And and you know there were times that you literally you know come to work and you're not sure if it's you know what 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 what's going to happen. You know um you know and and how things are going to happen. Yeah, how things are going to play out. It was a scary time in the world, let alone you know uh, for anybody's individual journey. And and my journey through that time was was literally coming in. It was uh it was quite funny because we had the pool right. So so I distinctly remember I had my quick briefing on how to run a pool. Um, you know, big uh, chlorine, you know, um, uh, you know, uh, filters out the back, and I had to have the gas mask and put all this on because literally, if if I didn't get the pool clean, then then the algae might have set into the filters that could have caused you know permanent damage and and massive costs uh, that that was there, and so it was just this really bizarre, almost apocalyptic kind of, kind of feeling about being the only staff member uh, coming in through that time and, and and looking after the property and the development. You know, and and also just trying to find a way to make sure that job keeper was happening, that people were getting some sort of, uh, you know, uh, remuneration to to keep their lives alive, and and everybody was really relying on me at that time to to um, to just keep things going because it was uh, such a scary time and an unknown with everybody in lockdown and uh, um, yeah, so so yeah, when I reflect back on on those periods and, and think of where we are now, I just it's it's hard to comprehend. Like it just feels like to Totally different universes. Yeah, hundred percent. So, will we see a little side hustle now of uh, Sean coming to clean Z pool for you? Well, have you learned enough from that, mate? Uh, no, no, absolutely not. Um, but, um, but you know, um, I did take a photo. I might put it up one day of the actual thing where the gas mask. It was. Uh, it just sort of summed up just the bizarre world that we were living in at the time. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a lot of people have sort of said. You know, post grand final. You know, they talked about the community club and and all the things that we know about the family and stuff like that. And it's always pretty much been that way. But how how much actually came from those times? Because when people did start coming back in and we started getting up and running, we were probably the best suited to take it because of just how close knit everyone was, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's you know, this was um, this was a journey that that the community took the club through, not the club taking the community through. I, I, I said. Very much so that you know, um, it was it was our supporters, it was our members, it was everyone who was passionate about the club. That's what kept the club going. That was that was what made it worth coming to work every day uh, for everybody that worked here. Was knowing that that uh, people really cared. Like it was, you know, when you when you know you're working for something that means something to people, and and there's there's more um, there's more outcomes than, than than just the financial ones or or anything like that. That that that's what made it. Yeah, you know, so special and and so important for that period, and you feel like you're really doing this for for for, for genuine people who really love the club, who would you know who have spent you know the entire existence of the club supporting them, and um, yeah, so so how could you not how could you not really really want to get into uh, in, in, into doing this, and and as it started to to come good, you know, I I remember the times when when things started to turn and. You know, we started to to say things like won't back down and we started to really understand again what it meant to be to be a community club and and to to talk about being part of the Mariners family become these core pillars that's uh that, that set the club up for what was an amazing season and and now we refer back to them to uh, to go again absolutely mate well was there a time during this year I mean obviously you know in speaking to Monty you know the plan keep developing keep pushing and there was definitely you could see aspects coming together was there a time during the year that i mean all of us are big fans we're going to hope we're going to win the thing but was there a moment where you thought you know what we're actually creating something really solid here um look i think i think that it wasn't as much as the moment it was as much as just when you're around the team yeah. just the belief and the way that they were going about things um like it was it it, it was, there was such a sense of calmness and uh, confidence in their own ability, um, you know, desire to play fun football. Like like the way Monty had set them up, that was just infectious. So so when you're around the team, things were, 
you know, you could you could you could feel it. You know, is is the best way to to really describe it. That there was something special. Uh, that was with that playing group. There was something amazing about the way that they were going about their 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 day to day conduct. Uh, and so you couldn't help but really believe, which is where that sort of started to come out. Is 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 if everybody continued to believe that the way that they would, that, that nothing was standing their way. So. I mean, there was, uh, you know, the games that sort of stand out for me was the sort of Melbourne City one or draw. But if, if I point to a moment when I knew that things were really different, it was the the Brisbane away game. Yep. Um, the the pre the the pre the days leading into that, the travel up, the flights that were getting cancelled, the fact that the flights got cancelled that night, they'd hung around the airport all day, had to fly up on match day, uh, and even that flight was cancelled, and they had to get another one. And because they were so professional, they were there early enough uh, in time to get it. Uh, I had not seen a playing group uh, or a coaching staff, you know, in my entire time in sport that wouldn't have said, nah, this is too hard. Piss off. We're going home. Reschedule the game. They had every right to. But when that team said, no, we're going up there and we're going to win. Yeah. I was like, wow, that, that was that was a mentality and a, and a direction that I had never seen before. And that for me was like, oh wow, this is this is really special. There is yeah. there is something in this that they, they could go all the way, and and they did, you know. So I, I look back at that moment now, and I go, that was the first clear indicator to me that this was more than just a just a normal team in a normal season. No, absolutely. And and speaking to Richard Peel just a week or so ago, and we and he, he even said that you know, other chairman owners are talking to him about where does this culture come from? Players staying behind on the field taking their, their their kids on the field with them. They w- will sign every single autograph, a lot of times warranted where they should be getting off the field because Monty's probably having a fit waiting for him to do a debrief and stuff. But that that culture and all that, how important when you sign a player is them having that understanding of the Mariners as well as the ability that they can play on the field? Look, it's not, it's not a prerequisite when you come to the club, yeah. but it's a prerequisite when you're at the club. So I think it's more about does a player have the capacity and the will to buy into what's what's there, um, and, and I think that that's that's the key part. If if uh, you know, no one can can prepare for what this club and this um, what 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 the the culture is like because you know it is special, it's unique. So you can't um, have that prerequisite. And I think if you have that prerequisite, sometimes you might get something different than what you think you're getting. So I suppose if anything. It's the ability of of them to buy into what is happening, yeah. um, and uh, and that's what keeps it going. It's yeah, it's uh, as long as they're open minded to to embrace the community, to embrace what is happening, um, then 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 it naturally flows, and yeah. and it's it's all encompassing. It's not just when they're when they're at work. It's not just when they're wearing Mariners. It is literally when they're on their day off and they're down at Erin Affair or they're down at the beach and they're walking past and someone says hi and want to get their autograph. Um, how they respond to that and how they buy into that uh, becomes really important because um, because it, it's it's when they when they don't feel a part of the community and they don't feel a part of it they feel like they're here for a short period of time yeah. you know or to use words of former players who didn't fit they're here on a holiday um, then, uh, then 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 yeah then, then we know it's not going to work for them and um, and to the credit I think that there were a couple of players that that were on the roster earlier on this year and. And um, Monty and Serge in the football department and Timo uh, were very quick to identify it. Um, not stress about it. Let's just do what's right for the person and for the club. Yeah, make some changes and move on. Oh, absolutely. And um, and of course now with um, yeah the challenges of, of Asia this season this season too. That's a that's a really it's a, it's a different dynamic it brings to this season. What 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 does it change for the for the club? Yeah, look, um, I, having lived it, uh, in a former life at another club, I know that this is uh, this is dramatic and not to be taken lightly. And and, and I think the record in the A League of clubs playing in Asia and performing in the A League uh, is very rare. Uh, that that anyone's actually gone and been able to, to to manage both with with small rosters and small budgets. It does take a fair bit. Uh, you know, with the extra travel, with the extra burden. You know, you're just talking about just. Just the coaching stuff, how much of their own personal lives that they've got to dedicate yeah. from being away from home, from being away from family, uh, the amount of, you know, they're doubling down in regards to the amount of video analysis and, you know, and, and, and behind the scenes preparation that goes in. It's all doubled the shifts, right, on a team that works immensely hard already. So um, so so all that is, is quite a lot to, 
to take on. And then just the playing load for the players uh, that, that comes through becomes um, – it becomes a lot. You know, when you look at September, uh, playing in Asia, you know, we hopefully are still in the Australia Cup, yeah. um, you know, performing well there. We're in the heat of our pre-season, so your normal pre-season matches would be happening against A-League opposition. Uh, new players that have come through, uh, is, it is a heck of a lot for, for them to all juggle. Um, but we wouldn't have it any other way. So so yeah. this is what we all live for, uh, and it's the, the ultimate time to shine for them. So it's, um, it, it is a lot. It is – it is going to to take a uh, a lot of effort, but um, uh, these guys have been able to do what no one else has done, so I've got no doubt that they can continue to perform that way. Absolutely, and having inflatable master food sauce bottles will travel, even if it is over to uh, to, to Asia as we go. Do, does it look at? I mean, I, I guess Monty also looking at that when he's building the squad. That would, to a certain extent, more players. Does it does it give us any more latitude in that area? I think it's uh, it's going to draw heavily into the connection for the academy pathway, yeah. uh, which is only natural, right? Because regardless of who you can bring in, you're bringing them in in pre-season. Yeah. So, so you know, regardless of, of what level player he's looking at, he'll be looking at what what their preparation is, and and every weekend, like he did yesterday, he'll be out at Plume Park and and yeah. and seeing seeing players that he'll be can uh, track closely, see see how they fit into the model uh, to come together. So I'm sure that this will. Uh, be a good drawdown opportunity for them on the academy, um, yeah. and uh, and to to look at uh, uh, to look at how that uh, how that connects, um, and uh, and yeah, I, I know these guys. I know how they'll combat it. And that's through absolute dedication, hard work, and not leaving a you know a stone unturned. Absolutely. So let let's uh, let's fast forward or rewind. I don't know which way it would be. The grand final day. Um, the night before, how well did you sleep? And was it still buzzing through things you had to do? Did you give yourself any latitude to think, I'm just going to enjoy this day as much as I can? Um, yeah, I think uh, the day before was. I mean, we were we were busy making sure that we had our, our ticket, our buses were all ready, that all the ducks were lined up and that, you know, um, and that we just didn't want to, didn't want to miss out. We didn't want to sit there and have, uh, we've stuffed up and someone hasn't got their ticket or... Uh, or, or you know, or, or, or someone from the family, you know, maybe one of the players' families didn't have the, you know, the right setup or didn't know what was going on, or, or just so we're just trying to look for as many loose ends as as, as we as we could find. Um, we did miss some, but we got most yeah. uh, that was there. So that's where the real focus was was, uh, I suppose, trying to just make sure that everybody had what they needed. Um, you know, same from a football perspective. Uh, I think all the plans were pretty well in place by by the day before. But again, just making sure that we we're all ready to go. Um, and uh, and then yeah, I think um, yeah the day of the game was pretty nervy for me. I sort of went and watched two of my sons play in you know, one place at CCU and the other uh, place for Mariners. So I sort of uh, uh, got got sucked into watching them, which was a good stress relief. So I didn't have to think about because there was nothing I could have done, right? Like I'm just sitting there waiting. Exactly. Um, you know, it's it's all it's all going to happen in front of me, and yeah. and you, you actually feel quite uh, quite helpless uh, yeah. when it comes together. So. Um, so yeah, that was a good way to to expend a bit of the nervous energy, and uh, uh, and then yeah, on, on the on the on the day it was just uh, pretty awestruck as to uh, as to what happened and uh, the way it played out. It was it was quite amazing, really. Yeah, and did you get a point? And I, and I said to the the you know a few of the guys I've spoken to, I mean I'm sure Monty even at six one was yelling out, you know, focus boys, it's not over yet. But was there a moment you gave yourself in that second half where you went, we, we, we've got this. Yeah, at five one, I was walking down pitch side, and it was like a champions run, walking yeah. through and cheering and high five, and it was awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I did see the sixth goal. I couldn't believe it, but I was already, I was already, I was, I was strutting. Oh, I'll be yeah. honest, you know. So and uh, uh, and uh, and yeah, it was just a mad scramble to try to get, try to get down there, knowing that we were about to have a very hectic on field uh, situation. So it's. Um, just trying to get through the crowd and having everyone sort of hugging down a high five and all, all the way through was um, was pretty amazing. So yeah, at five one, that was that was where I was at. And I remember, I mean, apart from the actual game, people who talked to me were still talking about the interview post game. That was that more of just a, just all the emotions of all the past couple of years just all came out. It just felt like this is it. Yeah, it's funny because I did quite a few interviews on the night. No, it went that way. No one, no one seen the other ones, right? So I was really quite bored. I bored, I suppose. But um, and it was interesting because it was the uh, that was the Access All Areas guys yeah. from Keep Up that did that interview, and um, 
and I'd been blooming with them for the last four weeks, right? So, so they had been asking for too much. They'd been uh, pushing the boundaries too far, and uh, and we'd been in quite sort of confrontational mode for them for the whole time. Um, so I was, I was actually yeah, as much surprised as myself um, as anyone else that that he was the guy to uh, uh, David Wayne is his name, and, and we got a great you know sort of thing. But at the time, I suppose because of all that energy that we had been expressing with each other, I was I was just talking to him. And it just happened. I, I don't know. It was. It was just. Yeah. Um, just me sort of talking and dialogue to myself, and yeah. um, didn't freaking realise it would go that viral. So I'll never live it down. But uh, anyway, it's. Um, yeah, yeah. It was a moment that was there on the night from the journey. Oh, mate, and it was brilliant. As I said, it's. Uh, you know, to to me, it just it just summed us all up because I I don't know of too many people that had a dry eye to start with. I mean, luckily from us, we're seeing you know yourself, we're seeing Gabby, we're seeing Dan, we're seeing people we've known for since the start and through the years who so were just on that field, families celebrating together. I mean, I know the trophy was lifted by Danny Vukovic, but the whole club was there to celebrate, and that's just how it should be, right? Yeah. I think that team photo, um, you know, at the end with Danny holding the trophy up, um, we knew, you know, there were people at APL saying, oh, the Mariners ruined the photo, like, and and, and that, that's, that's their mentality because they just don't understand us. Yeah. Uh, so what that was all about, it was it was always going to happen. It was um, uh, it was a special moment and something that will, uh, of course, be be etched in history forever. But also etched in history in regards to you know, who it is, who we are, uh, what the A League should stand for, what, what what this could be about. It this was more more of a message to to the whole football uh, fraternity in the country as it was uh, about us. This was yeah. this was a message to to everybody around that. Yeah, there is a way to get things right. There is a way that that football isn't always led by money and the and the, and the decisions of of the big power brokers and uh, and that's there. And, and we continue to push that message and and represent that that we do believe that that there is a better way. Absolutely, and I'm looking forward to doing it all again in about twelve months' time. How good would that be? That's the, the next day at all, and bring bring on Asia as well. Just um. Just a quick question to um, a lot of people talking now about the, the second tier coming in and clubs and like, how much involvement have we or, or the chairman or the clubs had in shaping that second tier? Have much involvement at all? No, not really. Uh, we keep getting briefs and updates. Uh, we keep getting versions. We keep getting viewpoints. Um, yeah, that's there in and around. Um, we can have as much to say as we want if we want to get involved. But I suppose ultimately it's, it's, it's not really our place. Uh, that's there, and um, and look, I suppose you know, personally thinking about it, at times when we were we were at the bottom and going through it really tough, um, for me at the time, I was thinking, you know what, if there was a second tier, I'd prefer to be winning a second tier than getting flogged, uh, you know, with no with no end in sight down the bottom of the first tier. So, and and, and I suppose there's uh, as the second tier one day comes in, there will be you know those movements for uh, for clubs there to go up and down uh, accordingly, and and I think that there's. Yeah, you know, there, there's really that rationale that you know football should be football, and and uh, and we should get there. So uh, whether they can financially get there, whether the structures can get there, you know, I suppose it's it's you know every chairman and Mike Charlesworth in particular has put in a lot of money over the years, uh, and for him to be exposed to to have a franchise that uh, devalues is 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 uh, hard to comprehend from a business perspective, mm. but from a football journey and a pathway perspective, then then why shouldn't any any club in the country be able to? Uh, to, to get to the top if they're good enough. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and finally, mate, what is fast becoming one of my favourite subjects, I cannot wait, our A-League women's side. Uh, we're catching up with uh, M Husband in the in the near future to have a chat with her. How's it all shaping up? Looking good? I, I, honestly, I just can't wait to see them run out. But uh, from a club point of view, how are we looking? Yeah, look, I suppose there's some aspects we've been uh, intentionally pretty quiet to uh, uh, to, to allow the, uh, the grand final to get the clear air that it needs to not get lost in that. Um, so, so we have signed several players, and uh, we've got several more to come through. Uh, we do have, um, you know, great announcements are coming through about, you know, um, you know, the, the training setup, the training facility, uh, leveraging off the back of the Women's World Cup uh, that's there, and and ultimately, you know, yeah, we've got we've got a vision of of having a women's team that that emulates and represents the club uh, in its purest essence. But also, I think what's more exciting is is the women's team is going to teach the clubs and stuff. We're actually going to learn more. Uh, that, that we can teach in this situation, and 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 I think it's going to be unbelievable for role model for for our community. It's going to give a whole you know another squad of players to to get out there and keep getting the message about uh, who we are and what we stand for and make a real difference. And 
and hopefully along the way there's lots of goals and lots of exciting moments. Uh, I think it'll be fascinating to see how um, how, how we embrace uh, them. So there's there'll definitely be double headers that that will bring the whole Mariners family together. Uh, but uh, but the other franchises all sort of show that there will be a group you know of of supporters that are focused on the women's team, uh, and they are they are uh, the uh, a core element that's there. And, and from what we can tell at the moment, it's not just about, you know, those participants that will be great or the girls who play football, I'm sure we'll get right behind them. But there's a real element of, you know, of uh, of, of, of mums who are going to want to come and have a great time, leave the kids at home with dad, uh, come and get a wine, have a cocktail, have a champagne, you know, and, and you know, we're looking at having a ladies' lounge. We're looking to have, have something new and fresh and exciting to come through. And, uh, and standalone games are going to have to be just as, uh, fun and as exciting in the women's, um, you know, it's uh, it's a huge opportunity. We've got an unbelievable leader in, in Emily Husband to to lead us in our inaugural year. Um, you know, we've got a great first signing in Annalise Rasmussen, who's tearing it up in NPL two, yeah. uh, and uh, and doing unbelievable stuff. That's there. Um, you know, Dan Barrett in and around. Yeah, um, yeah, really getting close to getting those girls promoted into MPL one. So already they're starting to replicate what we've seen in the boys' space. So um, it's great. It, it's a completeness of brand uh, for us, and, uh, and 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 I just can't wait. I think uh, um, I think I, I might shed another tear when that one happens as well. You know, so it's uh, it, it is something really special this building. Yeah, no, you won't be alone on that one, mate. I'm absolutely pumped. I think it's just fantastic. And again, not just for the club, but for the area, the community. And about time the uh, over 35 and 45 men just put the ice on the knees, stayed home the night and let the women go out and have a night out at, uh, to watch the women play. How good would that be as well? Mate, um, want to thank you for everything. Not not just, I know it's been, you know, it's a massive year for the club, but I, I don't think the accolades that, um, and I don't think the understanding of what, you've actually done and, and been through yourself to keep this club where it is today. Um, we all thank you for it. We really, really appreciate it. And uh, you've always been a great friend to be able to come on the show a couple of times as well. And I really appreciate that, mate. So thank you very much. No, cheers. And no, the thanks goes to everybody else. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's all our fans. It's all our community. It's all the stuff. Uh, yeah, I've got a quick funny one for you. So I don't think this story has been told. So he's an exclusive. Uh, I think uh, Jason Cummings is, uh, is about to score the, uh, um, yeah, his first penalty. Uh, we were actually seated directly above the bench, so we had a corporate function. And Dan is is directly above above the bench. You'll notice that up until that point, Monty's wearing a jacket, and after that point, he's no longer wearing a jacket because the because the big fella got so excited he threw his beer in the air, and there was one person that landed on it. That was the bloody head coach. Oh. So and, uh, <laughs> you know, so he will never leave that one down, and, and, and to get that story out there uh, <laughs> to stitch him up a little bit. So uh, I'll sort of finish up on that one. It's just, um, yeah, it just, it, 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 it's, uh, it was an amazing night. Amazing stories will keep coming out and uh, and uh, can't wait to do it all again. Absolutely. And I'll, we'll make sure we bring that up with him next time too. And a, and a personal thank you too for letting us hold the trophy on the uh, on the night as well. It would have been a couple of hours after we'd actually lifted it to actually hold it myself. I think it was more nervous in that five seconds than any time in my life I was going to drop the bloody thing. But I really, really appreciate that, mate. It was uh, it was a great moment. So uh, so thank you again. And um, I'm sure we will definitely catch up again closer to the season to see how everything else is going. Yeah, sounds great, mate. I need to get a beer until we're going, so that's something to do. Let's do it. We'll catch you soon. Yes, thanks, mate. Okay. And welcome back to the Marty Mariners show. And well, as I said before, the uh, the players have made special trips back from the Gold Coast just to be here, so we don't want to keep them waiting any longer. One of the most uh, consistent players uh, that we've had this year, and I definitely think he's been his best for the Mighty Mariners. Storm Roo, how are you doing, mate? I'm good, mate. Thanks for having me on. That's what I say. And uh, freshly back from the Gold Coast, it must be good just to maybe just chill out for a couple of days. It's been a massive uh, four to six weeks, really. Yeah, it has been. Yeah, um, obviously after the win, it's probably a week long celebration. Yeah. So, um, yeah, need a need a couple of days off for for rest now. Absolutely, well, well deserved, yeah. man. Um, mate, as I ask all the boys when they start, were, were you always going to be a professional footballer? Yeah, yeah, pretty much no backup plan. Um, sort of, uh, yeah, threw all my eggs in one basket when I went to football. Um, Probably should have focused more in school and uh, and and studied more, but uh, no, it was just a dream of mine, and uh, 
you know, I felt like nothing was really going to stop me. So, uh, yeah, no backup plan, always football. Always going to be that way. And, and has it always been as a fullback or have you sort of ventured forward? No, no. I was actually a really good striker mm. in my uh, sort of uh, early teens. I was playing in New Zealand, probably nine, ten years old, 11 years old, breaking records for goals. And right. yeah, never, never thought I would ever uh, go back to fullback. And then as the years went on, I slowly went to center back. I'm uh, sorry, center mid and then drifted back to, to right back. So I uh, went the opposite way. Um, I was going to say, so, Dan, uh, Danny's not in trouble for next year in goalkeeping position there. <laughs> who knows? Anything's possible. That, Anything's that's possible. Always- and yeah. you weren't in Monty's ear to just remind him grand final day like a Cummings Rue formation up front might have worked as well. <laughs> I think if we needed a couple of goals, I might have charged forward at the end. But uh, no, I think Tulio does a good enough job up there. So um, I'll, I'll let him stick up up top. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, mate. No, they didn't, didn't do a bad job up there at all. Um, no. hey, for, first time around for the Mariners, I think it was, uh, was it 2013 to 18, somewhere around there. Um what, what were your memories of that first time around? Because I, I think probably a little bit different to the the experience this time, but what were your memories yeah. of that first time around? Yeah, obviously I signed after the boys had just won the grand final, so I was coming into a you know, championship winning team. Yeah. Um, a few players moved on, obviously, obviously after that grand final win for them. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, it was great coming into this, that team. We had a really good season my first year, and I thought, you know, everything was perfect. I thought, how good is this? Yep. Can't get much better. I almost thought it was too easy, um, you know, coming into a team like that and sort of having the season I did, getting nominated for a Young Football of the Year award, and yep. you know, everything was going smooth, everything was going great. And then obviously, um, you know, the next four years was pretty tough. Um, hit some hard times, and uh, uh, football wasn't too enjoyable for a lot of that time. But, um, uh, you know, it's always been a good bunch of lads at, at the Mariners, and even though, you know, we weren't winning games, um, you know, there's still that policy that, you know, sort of no dickhead policy at the Mariners and, um, you know, you can't put anything on, on the boys that came and gone through those years. But, um, yeah. yeah, just from the top top down, it just wasn't um, just wasn't good enough, really. Yeah. Yeah. And and what would you say as a footballer you learned most? Because you're right, it was, you know, pretty lean times for us. But as a footballer, that motivation just to keep on pushing, you probably learn a lot of lessons that probably carry through to today, right? Yeah, definitely. And I sort of, um, you know, spoke to the boys about that. Um, uh, sorry, are you still there, mate? Yeah, mate, yeah. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, I spoke to the boys about that sort of going into the grand final that, uh, you know, I've been in 10 years now. I've been in, that, in the league for 10 years and this is my first one. So yeah. you never know when the when the bad times are going to come. So when the good times are here, you just got to soak it all in and, um, you know, not take it uh, for granted. So... Yeah, you, obviously that comes with age and experience that you learn that football is very, very short career. Um, so moments like this, you know, you really got to treasure and Absolutely. and um, give your best, especially when we're coming to the back end of the season. And, you know, we really all felt we had a chance um, to do something special. Um, the boys really knuckled down and, um, you know, was fully focused. Absolutely. And, that, and the rest is history, which I'm sure we'll touch on in a sec. I just wanted to check too. I think it was uh, Monty's second year at the club when you were playing first time round. Were, were, were you looking at him? Was he always gaffer material? Was he? Did you see him back then as being one day being the boss? Yeah, yeah, definitely. We always used to have a little joke with him saying that when he becomes a gaffer, he's got to sign me wherever he is. Um, <laughs> yeah, no. So you could you could tell from the start. You know, he's always been a leader. Um, my first ever session, I still remember he was the one that came, put his arm around me, and sort of you know. Um, you know, asked me how I was going and sort of yeah. was really interested in, in who I was as a person. So yeah. um, he's always uh, he's always showing those qualities and, you know, he's showing now how good he is and um, the things he's done with this team is uh, is remarkable. Um, you know, he's got the best out of every single player. So him and Serge just do a great job together. Um, yeah, I mean, getting the best out of everyone. Yeah, no, absolutely, mate. And just I, just, I think it was just over 100 appearances that time around. Went down to Melbourne Victory for a while. What, what did you notice straight up the differences between the clubs? Obviously, one in the big city, one the community. Yeah. The thing must have been some big changes, right? Yeah, like chalk and cheese, mate. It was, you know, obviously up here is a very community driven, and um, down there it was just like walk into a totally different environment. Yeah. Um, you know, almost like a corporation. How big the club is. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, 
every game was huge down there and it was sort of different coming from a Mariners team where we weren't winning and, you know, um, it, it felt like we weren't really playing in important games because we just weren't getting there. We're down in victory. It was every single game was important no matter where you were on the table. The fans were, were always there and they were always, uh, you know, if you weren't winning, giving you a hard time. But yeah. um, it was a great, great experience for me. I loved every second of it down there. Yep. Love the fans, love love the club. It was it was amazing. So um, yep. you know, to be in a city like that where you know they love football so much and and sort of play in almost a European feel, um, was was really great. And you know, my first year again, my first year, I came into a championship winning team. Yeah, and I finished third that year again and had a really great season. You know, playing with the likes of Honda and um, Ola Toivonen and. You know, really, really good players, and you know, under Musket, who's a really great coach yeah. and, a, and a good person as well. So, yeah. um, then, then to go to another sort of year where it was just chop and change, new coach came in, yeah. got sacked, and now another coach came in, players leaving. It was just like it sounded, it felt like it was happening all over again. And that's sort yeah. of what happened my last two years at Victory was again. <laughs> I don't know if it's if it's me or if it's just bad luck, <laughs> but um, yeah, it was quite miserable the results and. Uh, yeah. Um, you know, it's, it was still still a great experience. So, um, yeah. yeah, I loved every minute of being down there. Yeah, and that was awesome. I mean, and it's great too. I mean, we, we get you back on the coast um, a couple of seasons back now. When, when you walk back in the door, what, what felt different? What was the most difference that you felt this time around? Uh, it was weird. It, was, it felt exactly the same, but different right. at the same time. It felt yeah. like sort of everyone had got their act together and it was a... Uh, I don't know, just a winning vibe around the place. Yeah. You know, as soon as you come back in, um, you know, it was like people like Rolsey, like Kai Rolls, you know, I left, he was like a kid. and um, But when I came back, he was, you know, an established A-League centre-back. He was, you know, probably the best A-League, uh, best centre-back in the A-League. Yeah. Um, uh, obviously, it was good. It, it felt like I never left, to be honest. It right. felt like I never left. It felt like I was still there. I knew, you know, most of the boys. Um, obviously, I knew Monty and... Um, yeah, it felt like I was just coming home, really. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it's, I mean, it's culminated in, in the year that we've just had. Um, did you get that feeling during the season that this group is just getting to the point where something special is going to happen? I think so, yeah. I think I, I've said it before where, you know, from day dot, you know, coming into preseason, we felt like we could do something special. Mm. And that was sort of drilled into us all season long. But yeah. I feel like probably... I think it was the last five games of the season where it really sunk in that we could do something where, you know, Monty sort of gave us a, uh, he gave us our own little, um, little goal to, you know, last five games, win this mini season that we had going on where, yeah. you know, um, sort of try to go undefeated or be, you know, top of the table over this five game per- period. And yeah. then we had, we won four and drew one through there. And then obviously beat Adelaide in the semis and won the grand final. So that last stretch, you know, from, Five games to go onwards, it felt like it felt like we couldn't lose. Honestly, um, even going down to Adelaide, it was it was a weird feeling. It was weird, you know, full packed house, um, backs against the wall. But I don't know, I don't know what it was about this team. I don't know. Everyone felt it, so it wasn't just me. It was really yeah. strange, you know. Even that, you know, we went one 0 down inside the first two minutes. I think of the first leg, and yeah. it was crazy to see no one panicked at all. It was just you know get the ball out the net and let's go score yeah. some goals. Yeah. Um, which was a complete contrast to, you know, the first time I was here yeah. when we went for that tough stage. It was um, it was really impressive to see, you know, such a young team yep. and young players not get rattled one bit and, um, you know, know what they had to go and do and, and we went out there and done it. Yeah. And and, and did that actually surprise? Because obviously there's a lot of talk about, you know, the, the youth in the side and the, the academy boys coming through and, you know, we've got a, a great, you know, great a group of uh, experienced boys as well that um, sort of support that. But were you even, you know, impressed by how Cool Karma collected these guys actually were in these big occasions? Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I mean, obviously we got Booker and then me, who's the second oldest, which is crazy for a 30-year-old to be the second oldest in the Absolutely. team. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, no, very impressed. Even, you know, coming in to training, you know, some of the boys we got in, like, you know, Nectar in that, you're thinking, how the how the hell did we get him, you know? Yeah. You'd see how good he was just from, the you know, the first training session. Yeah. Um, and that goes throughout the whole squad, you know, the, the age, like Nizzy and Maxi in the middle, yeah. Harry when he comes on. Yeah. I mean, I can go for everyone, Faz. Absolutely. Uh, 
yeah, and even like Sammy Silvera, who showed glimpses a couple of years ago, and then sort of everyone forgot about him. And now I'm shocked he's not in the Socceroos because he's been just as good as any other winger in the A League. Absolutely. Um, yeah, impressed. Yeah, I, yeah. I've I've been saying it all um, all week, sort of after the grand final, how special this group has been, and yeah, it was just almost like the the perfect mixture of of players, age, youth, whatever, whatever you want to call it. But um, they're all mature, yeah. really mature. It, it all worked, and and you mentioned him before. One guy who um, yeah, we're, we're going to miss, but good luck to the fellow. Got a nice move over to uh, to Sunderland Nectar. Um, mm. what, playing next to that guy, I mean, what is it that makes him spe- so special? To me, he has that Alex Wilkinson kind of poise on the ball time kind of thing. But you play right mm. next. To, what, what what did you say? Well, yeah, yeah, he reminds me a lot about Tra- Trent Sainsbury actually. Um, yeah. the yeah. way he moves, the speed he has, the composure on the ball. I just, I guess, composure is the huge one at yeah. at his age. You know, to be a leader at the back, to not stand down to any other players. You know, you could, you can hear him chirp. <laughs> He's chirping throughout the game. You know, if someone yeah. goes in hard on him, he'll go, you know, hard the next tackle back on them. He's, he's um, yeah, he's a special player. And I, you know, I've I've said. I've said before that I wouldn't be surprised, you know, if he's the main Socceroo at, at the back next to Rosie for the next 10 years, he's that good. And I think he's going to kill it over in England. Yeah, no, I think so too. And I mean, while we're sort of looking at the, the, the back line as well, Brian Kautak, I mean, what a, what a fine he's been. I, I can't believe how fast that guy is. I mean, we've sort of seen him push forward and be all over the place and then be back there in five seconds. Is, is he one of those players that you just know he's going to be in the right spot? Is he just seems that you just don't know where he is one minute and then he's always there? He just seems to just always be in that right spot in the back line. Yeah, yeah. Like, I had no idea how fast he was until the season started. Yeah. Um, he's he's just an absolute athlete. And, yeah. um, you know, his physical presence is crazy. He's, he's um, yeah, another, another like, how, how did we get this guy? How has he not been a professional footballer before? Um, you know, he obviously came in on trial and, you know, you could tell he was, you know, he had something. But to be honest, he wasn't, oh, my God, this guy's amazing. We have yeah. to sign him right now. Yeah. And then, you know, we signed him and then as soon as he started playing, it was, oh, my God, you know, this guy's amazing. Like, how did, yeah. how's he um how's he slipped through the cracks? But he's, yeah, uh, yeah not, not only a great player, a great person. Um, and, you know, I'm so happy for him. He's had, you know, he's deserved everything that he's got, you know, all the accolades and all that. He deserves deserves everything and more because he's a, he's a good player, great player. Absolutely, mate. And I've, um, I've been sprouting the word left, right and centre. I, I honestly believe this has been your best season in a yellow and blue shirt. Is that how it's felt for you too? Yeah, definitely. I think it's another one. Um, it is, a, you know, it's a lot easier to perform it and, and show people what you're capable of when you've got a, you know, great players around you. And sure. I think that's that's the same for everyone that's had a good season this year. Um, yeah. It's, uh, yeah, it's felt good. It's felt really good. I've, you know, everything's just sort of clicked this season and, um, you know, I didn't really get a chance to, to play last year. You, obviously, Louis Miller fully deserved um, deserved to play. He's probably the best right back in the league, you know, and he got, a, he got that great move. So, you know, <clears throat> just to have the opportunity to play week in, week out, sort of um, feel comfortable again and, um, you know, uh, feel confident really, feel confident in myself and feel confident around the boys uh, during the game um, really helped out. So, yeah, I, I would say this would be probably my best season um, in, in the last couple of seasons, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, I mean, obviously now just talking about we, we won the last round in Adelaide, I've, I've said to many people, I think that first half was probably the best we played for God knows how many years. I think we just absolutely clicked. The the semi final there got uh, you know got the lead, but to come back to Gosford, twenty thousand um, and fifty nine filled up the stadium. Yeah. How did it actually feel? Because it's it it must be a good thing for the play or a great thing for the players to walk out knowing the work that you've done, and then to see that full stadium that must just give you just that extra you know five ten percent right? No, oh, hundred percent. I think I was probably most most nervous in that game all season because. Yeah. Um, because of the hard work we put in and, and, you know, there's always that fear that, you know, you, you can't do it at home in front of your fans when, when it really counts. And, yes. um, you know, to go on the high of winning the last game, of seeing the four nil and then getting the two one away in Adelaide. Yes. Um, you know, it was, it was, it was nerve wracking sort of going into that thinking that, yeah. you know, what if we don't do it? But, um, no, nah, obviously, it, yeah, another special night that and the grand final night, the two most special yeah. nights I've had with this club. Yeah. Um, to do it in front of everyone that came out and supported us, and yeah. you know, really just show what we can do again in such yeah. a huge game, and 
again, the young boy stepping up and doing it in a high pressure occasion like that uh, yeah. was um was was really huge and like I said, a huge night for the coast, huge night for the club, and probably behind the grand final, the the best night I've had um yeah. with this club definitely. Absolutely, and and of, and of course the grand final. How well did you sleep the night before? Are you a nervous sleeper? Can't sleep at all, or was it pretty relaxed? No, nah, I, I was strangely relaxed. I think everyone was. Yeah. Um, I'm usually I'm usually not too riled up before the night night before the game. I usually get a good sleep in. Um, uh, but then when it came game day, I was really excited. I couldn't get my I couldn't really get my afternoon nap, and I was excited just to go. Yeah. Um, it was like I said, a weird weird feeling around the boys at lunch and sort of around the hotel that yeah. it was just full relaxation. Um, you could probably see, you know, if you watch the all access and, yeah. you know, we have their golf day and yeah. Jason Cummings teeing, teeing a ball out of Yaron's ass. Like yeah. it, that's sort of, that's like what it is all, all yeah. week. Like we were just having fun with each other. We were just, yeah. you know, treating it like another week and um, come grand final day, everyone was super, super relaxed. It was a weird feeling. It's not what I thought it was going to feel like. Definitely not. Yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, um, just with your access too, you know, we do see inside the dressing sheds and, you know, where Monty talks, just everyone listens, everyone's linked up and stuff like that. But but what was it like having those cameras walking around there as well? Because that's, to, to me, coaching-wise, playing-wise was always our space. But to have those cameras around, was it, well, they're just here, ignore them? Did it take away from anything? No, I don't think at all. No, no, they they were pretty good at sort of, yeah. um, you know, just hanging back and not getting too too much in anybody's faces. Yeah. Um, it was the last thing the boys were worried ab- about, yeah. to be honest. Um, um, oh, I thought it was good. I thought it was good. Right. They they they're professional. They you know left us alone if we want to be left alone and sort of just stayed in the background and, and got the footage. But um, yeah, no, it didn't didn't take away anything from from the night. It didn't take away anything from the win or. or the pregame or anything like that, I thought it was really good and I enjoyed watching it back and it's something you can Absolutely. have forever and, and watch back whenever you, you know, want to get the memories. Absolutely, man. I can't, I've yeah. lost count of how many times I've watched it and I still tear up every time I see the end. Oh, yeah, man, yeah. Um, and just the game itself, I mean, it was, you know, 2-1 at half time, still tight. Second half, um, Melbourne City came at us, gave us everything they had. 10-15 into it, you know, we got to 3-1 and then we just seemed to ease into this, I don't know this, this this rhythm, and there was just no answer coming back. Did did you find it strange that the further the game went on, we just seemed to get better and better and better? Is that how it felt for you guys out there? Yeah, yeah. So obviously the game started it was end to end, really really tense. I thought mm. um, I really, I thought it sort of had the makings of a of a nil nil ninety minutes because yeah. the way both teams were sort of defending. Absolutely. Um, you know, Jace gets that first goal and thinking, all right, this might change the, the the way the game goes. We might be a bit more defensive. And then, you know, obviously Sammy scores that 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 goal that he got, which was amazing. And then yeah. um they came back and you know, when they scored just before half time, we knew that they were going to come out. So that was sort of it almost helped us because we knew coming in the second half, coming out, we knew exactly what we were going to get. Yeah. Um two one, they needed a goal. Yeah. We knew that we were going to have to sort of bunker down and yeah. and um protect our goal and um you know to score the third and then the fourth was just crazy because yeah. you know and then fifth six I, I still can't put it into words i still can't believe it happened to be honest i've yeah. i've um i've found it hard to describe to people that have asked me yeah. you know how it felt because i can't even i can't even put it into words um yeah. you know, i think i came off at 4-1 um and I was still nervous, thinking like this can't be happening. This is too good to be true. Yeah. What if they come back? You know, all that sort of stuff. And then, um, you know, the fifth, the fifth, and then to top it off with that six was just oh, we were in dreamland. We couldn't believe it. Um, we we're just thinking about, geez, who's got the beers in the change room after this? Because it's going to be a big celebration. Absolutely, and then yeah. it certainly was, and probably to a point still is, but which is all great to see. It's, it's definitely well deserved. <laughs> yeah. And that final whistle went, mate. What was the first thing that you thought? Was it for you personally? Was it a unbelievable yeah. kind of thing? Yeah, I mean, it made made everything worth worth it. You know, I um, running onto the field, celebrating with the boys. You know, there's no better feeling. 
I don't think there'd ever be a better feeling in my career again unless, you know, we go and do it again next season. But yeah. um, with this group of boys particularly, you know, very, very special. And, yeah. yeah, like I said, hard to explain the feelings going through your head when you do that. Um, yeah. You know, to come from where we came from and you know, everyone reading us off at the start of the season that we wouldn't even make top six, you know. Yeah. You know how are you going to win with a team like that? On paper, we shouldn't be anywhere near the finals and to – you know, come out and, and and do that and win a grand final like that. It's you know, it's honestly one of the best sporting achievements in any code in in Australian sport. Um, and to be a part of that's like really really special, and you know something that you got forever. And for the fans as well, I mean, the fans deserve it just as much as the players because they've been there for for all the tough times. And you know, it was almost you know, it was almost perfect. I said at the start of the season, joking around that if we can you know, ten years after we last won it. Can win it again would be unbelievable, and um, it was just you know the fairy tale ending to a, a season like that. Absolutely, and of course at the uh, the end of the game, you know families coming on the field, all in there for the photo when Vuka lifts the trophy. Everyone's there as well. That that really embodies what this club's about, doesn't it? The families are coming on, everyone's walking around with their kids, all going on. I know you've done it during the season as well. That it really just embodies what this club is about, doesn't it? Yeah, like I, when I went over to my family, seeing my parents, seeing seeing my son, you know, I sort of just lost it when I when I got a hold of him. But the emotion sort of took over, and then yeah, you know, it's not only like you said, not only the players but the families. Um, it's it's huge, and to have my son up there, you know, go and get my medal with my son, and I think in all the celebration photos with Vuka lifting it, you can't even see my face because Vuka's got his tree trunk of an arm in my in my way the whole time. Yeah, it's but, a bit of a barrier. Like, my little man's on my shoulder and you can see his face in all the pictures and uh, you know how excited he was so it's uh it's all good um yeah to have that family photo at the end with all you know wives kids everyone involved was was really special yeah that was in special it was very impressive or almost as impressive as you guys being able to back up at Aaron Affair the next day I might give you the hot tip. <laughs> that was very special as well boys so we really really appreciate that yeah, um, that was good yeah, oh, it was fan. It, was, it just, it just, as I said, it's still, it's still a blur. It's still, yeah. it's still a blur to, to many of us. But um, yeah. And yeah. What, what about the situation with yourself, mate? Because I think there you had a year extension in there beforehand. Yeah, I signed. I uh, signed. I think probably halfway, maybe even just before halfway for the season, signed an extension. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, that always helps as a player. You know, yeah. to have security, knowing that you're going to be at the club this, the year after, and not only that, to, but. To feel like you're sort of rewarded by the coach that he, you know, appreciates, you know, how you've been playing that season. Yeah. Um, I think that really helped me kick on, you know, having that sort of security and um, help me help me kick on and have a really strong second half of the season. So yeah, back back again next season and um, you know, excited to 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 do it all again. Hopefully, absolutely, mate. Well, we're uh, we're really happy to have you there, mate. And I'm hoping there's uh, another few more years because the way you're going at the moment. Um, yeah, we want to keep you around forever. But, but mate, really appreciate uh, you dropping in for us uh, tonight. I know it's been a massive, as we said, a massive week. <laughs> God knows when it'll all end. But I'm yes. sure uh, Monty will make the phone call soon about pre-season and uh, reality. <laughs> but, uh, but, mate, we really appreciate uh, you, you joining us and uh, all the best for uh, pre-season ahead. No problem, mate. Thanks for having me. I okay. appreciate it. Thanks, man. Cheers, mate. See you later. Welcome back to the Marty Mariner Show. And well, this guy is pretty much as elusive off the field as he is on the field. And it's it's an absolute pleasure to have this bloke on because he's uh, just been a standout for us for uh, more than uh, more than one or two seasons. He's been an absolute legend for the club. Uh, Josh Nisbet, how are you doing, mate? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing good. How are you going? Yeah, going good, mate. Going good. Mate, um, I did see some photos today from the uh, from the golf course. Uh, who is the best golfer in your family, and why is it you? <laughs> no, I'm not very good at all. That I don't. None of our family are any good either. So I would be up there in my family, but we're at, we're at very low standards. <laughs> the bar's very very low. I know. Um, in, in talking <laughs> to uh, your, your dad a number of times, and and a shout out to your dad. Uh, I'm a few beers in debt for him now, so he's the tightest agent that I've probably had to deal with. But um, look, I know how important family and all that is to you, and then seeing, especially grand final day, seeing you walk around the field there with the, the that, that's a special thing, right? Because it's we talk about it being a family community club, but uh, you know, for you guys, family is just that tight, right? Yeah, it's 
especially for me, my family's been the biggest supporter. Even when someone else doubted me, so to be in a privileged position where I can have these experiences with them, it really means a lot. And unfortunately, they're in, in and I'm in in Central Coast. But when they do get the the chance to visit, or when things do work out, I like to make sure they feel a part of it, and yeah, they feel that it's not just my success, but also theirs too. Absolutely, and it's, and it's fantastic to see, mate. I know. I remember when you did first start, and we'll talk about the academy in a sec, but. But were you always going to be a professional footballer? Was that always the dream for you? Yeah, it was always the dream. I knew it was difficult and there was obviously things that were, were stopping it or putting it on delay. But, yeah, I, in my eyes, I was set on that. And, yeah, I wasn't going to let anything really stop me. Yeah. And, I mean, you made every post a winner there too. And, I mean, I mentioned the academy before, almost 50 games in the in the academy and, and speaking to a few of the boys, it's just, uh, it's, to me, it's been just an integral part of the success of the club. Now, what were your memories like of that that time in, in academy? Was it just all building? Or did it feel like something special at the time? Uh, you probably at the time, you don't think, wow, this is, in, in five years, I'm going to be with my mates winning a, an A-League Absolutely. championship. Absolutely. But we, we did feel like we were performing at a level that would get us in, a chance in the A-League. And also, we feel like we're building an environment where everyone was mates. You sort of yeah. Central Coast. You've got a few. You've got a few coasties coming in. You've got people coming from everywhere. So it's it's quite easy to bump people and have a lot of similarities with kids, especially yeah. especially kids that having moved away. In my case, away from home and living with other people, it it was pretty easy on. But yeah. I think what helped a lot is when you get to that next stage when you're in the A League and you've been in the trenches already with a fair few of them and. Yeah. You also enjoy your everyday life with them. It's pretty easy to kick on and, and have a, a fair large amount of belief in yourself. Absolutely. And I mean, I mean, you've known, I mean, you know, a number of these boys, even you, you played with even longer than that. But, but, but when you, when you first started, were you, were you always in that central midfield role or is that something that you found? Nah. So when I was younger, I was playing more, a bit more just behind a strike, a bit of a position. And then, yeah, I'm about, I think in the under 20s, I sort of went through a bit of a dry spell, not, not scoring or anything like that. So they yeah. dropped me a bit deeper. And yeah, I think it, it sort of suits my game a bit more, getting a bit more stuck in rather than that little bit of X factor, which, which I do believe I can do. But it's, I do like being a bit more involved in the game rather than getting the ball a little bit less. Absolutely. And, and, and do you think that's still underestimated in your game? Because... The, the amount of stuff that you create out there, I think a lot of it does go unnoticed. We see you battling away there in the middle of the park, but you, you have been quite creative and set up a lot of, um, you know, attacking movement this year. Yeah, look, I do maybe think I'm undervalued in that area, but I also think I can give more and do more that can sort of cross that off people's mark. I think I've got the, the end product on paper where people are thinking it's not a matter of, can he do what he is doing it type of thing then then there is no say whether whether I can do it or not I'm actually doing it absolutely and and I mean I don't know if you're oh I know you probably do remember your first game I think was a was it an FFA Cup game against Adelaide do you do you remember much from that day yeah I remember I don't know I remember thinking I was in the squad and not sure what was happening but in the week it looked like I was starting and then making the starting lineup and I remember. I didn't have a very good game at all. I remember getting hooked off at half time. And I was yeah, in my in my opinion I was very bad, but I think just the excitement of playing sort of yeah shadowed that in my mind. No. Yeah. And and is that I mean, we've talked to a few of the boys who are notoriously nervous before games. Is that still something that you go with if you do you get worried if you're not nervous before a game? No, nah, so a few probably the first year I, I got very nervous. I thought yeah. I've got to play well this game, I've got to play well that game, but yeah. Now I'm pretty comfortable. I like I, I feel like I'm confident in my ability, but also every even every just every person's going to have their their bad day, no matter what they do. You, yeah. you try to do the right things; it's not going to work out. So as long as I, well, one of Monty's favorite things is you can have have a bad day off the ball. So it's yeah. sort of something I think is a great, great uh, saying for everyone trying to trying to become professionals and even professionals just to, even if it's not your day, just keep working hard and go for it. Absolutely. And it's something, 
something that you definitely do in spades, mate. And and it's something that crept up on me when I was having. A, you're almost at a hundred games now in the in the senior in the in the A League. Is that is that something that came up real quick and quicker than you thought, or is it to you? Yeah, it feels like a hundred games almost. Uh, I feel like it's come pretty quick. I, you see it around the league, people that have played 50 games or 100 games, and you thought, oh, I didn't realise that they played that many. And yeah, it's sort of the same thing for me. I, I, last year, I thought, oh, I just hit 50, and now I'm not too far off. So. Pretty, pretty, pretty big achievement. I mean, you know, we sort of look at the players that have sort of reached that milestone for the club. It's a, it's a hell of a, a level to get to. We um we spoke to uh, to Max Ballard um, a week or so ago, and... Uh, he uh, he gave you a hell of a rap, and uh, he says he does all the work for you just to let you do all the fancy stuff. I mean, you know, we, we can't let him get away with that, surely. <laughs> nah, to be fair, he, he does he does a lot, and yeah, he's a funny bloke. Yeah, oh, that's 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 a couple of things that we'll call him. Yeah, I mean, the the partnership <laughs> that you guys have struck up because I mean, during the season, often you guys are up against three man midfields in the middle there and you guys just seem to work so well. And I mean, we'll count Harry Steele when he comes on as well and, and, and covers uh, the middle of the park. It just seems to have been a partnership that's flourished for you this year. Yeah, it's, it's been good. It's when you get along with someone so well off the pitch, it's pretty easy to get along with them on the pitch. And yeah, Maxie, Maxie it's a great player and we always knew we'd be up against it. And it's something maybe we wouldn't thrive on, but you're happy for the challenge and you know, if if you do well in a three v three midfield, it's like oh well. But if you're doing well in a two v three midfield, you're thinking wow, like they're really doing it. And I think that's helped us a lot. Being getting sort of a bit more a light on Maxi, especially seeing that we're outnumbered and he's still performing and we're still performing. And when Steely comes off the bench, he's yeah. he's doing exactly what we were doing before, and yeah, and filling the boots perfectly. Absolutely, and I mean, you know, the season like we've just had hasn't it hasn't always been the case at the Mariners, does it? It, there are times now the attacking talent that we had, I mean, particularly this year that's just running around, it must feel just so good sometimes picking up the ball and just having these choices of, you know, which which attacking player to get it to. Yeah, exactly right. When the when the attacking boys are doing their job, it's all, all, you, all I need to do, all I actually need to do is just get the ball and give it to them and, and just sort of sit behind and, yeah. and let them do what they need to do. And, yeah, and for this season, especially sort of the back half, that they were doing that really well, especially Marco Tulli. He was on fire. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And I mean, I've I've never heard cheers like it. I mean, I don't know out of anyone else when when you go to to have a shot. There's so many people just want you to put it in the back of the net, mate. It's just unbelievable. Like, yeah, you know, all the people before the game, even pre grand final, it was they could make my day and Nizzy score a goal. That would be just fantastic. And <laughs> if you feel that as pressure as part of your game as something that you just want to keep pushing at to to get a few more in the back of the net or is it just, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing? Yeah, so like, I'll, I want to keep doing what I'm doing. I think more importantly, the performance, whether it's a, a goal or assist is the most important thing to me, making sure that I do my part for the team and, and play well. And yeah. But yeah, I think to get, maybe to get to the next level, even step up my game was to do that and, and get the five goals for the assist or get a few, a fair few more goal contributions where, yeah. There's not much you can uh, you can't argue that I can't do if that makes sense. Yeah, and uh, I mean as we'll, we'll talk obviously talk, cover about the uh, grand final very shortly, but does it still feel like it's celebration time, or are you starting to dread that Bryce is going to be getting you running around an oval very very soon? <laughs> no, Bryce was pretty good. He he didn't have us doing yo-yo, and then he got his game. But um, yeah. yeah, no, there's still a bit of a still a bit of a buzz, and a few of the boys are getting a, getting tattooed. They're with the oh, palm trees and the, the, the toilet seat. So, no, nah, there's definitely still a buzz, especially when you see people that haven't yet congratulated you. You get reminded that you're A-League champions. And, yeah. yeah, it's nice to know that you – I think other than Melbourne City supporters, we had every other neutral on our side. So, pretty it's pretty nice to, to know that. Oh, absolutely, mate. And I'm, I'm glad to hear the tattoos are gone. I'm surprised there's no sauce bottles going, mate. Surely someone's got to go to the big bubble. <laughs> That's, that's got to be happening. Oh, maybe Jace can do that. but <laughs> <laughs> If there's going to be one, well, I think he's over in Japan yeah. at the moment. God knows he's got, traveling all over the joint. But um, let, let's just, <laughs> just cover off on the, the season on, on the park. Did you feel, I, I felt that we really gained momentum the back half of the year, I think maybe from, you know, we had results here or there, but we always seem to be moving forward. Is that how it felt for you guys too, that despite a few results, 
but the journey was still going forward. We were still improving. Uh, yeah, I would say so. Like our objective was still to keep doing well and performing and make sure we get results. But there was definitely a stage where we thought, like, come on, boys, we like pull, pull yourselves out of it. Like we got to, it's not about performing well or, or getting lucky. It's a matter of actually getting, getting the result now. And yeah. I think there was sort of, I feel like the moment might have been Brisbane at home where I think yeah. the finals run, we, we, yeah, we did exactly that. But it was definitely the talk of, we know we're good enough, but knowing we've got knowing we're good enough is is enough anymore. We've got to make sure we we show that. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I, I mean, and I, again, I think I've said nearly on every episode that that the last game of the, the the season proper in Adelaide, where we got the win, I to me that performance pre semi was, was probably the best I'd seen us play for for a long, long time. I, and to be honest, I, I think that just set us up for the, the final series. It must have felt good going there, getting that result in Adelaide and just coming away with it. That that must have given us a lot of confidence. Yeah, we, we went in that game knowing a, a win would be set, most likely second and most likely an Asian Asian Cup qualification. But we like we sort of said to ourselves, let's not put any doubt on it and go out and give it a win. Yeah. Thankfully, on the day, everyone everyone did that, and yeah, it's a for a team that's coming second and just before the finals to to beat them four one. It sort of it doesn't give you a bit of it doesn't give you arrogance, but definitely self of uh, a fair bit of confidence, knowing this is what we're capable of, and and then shy of that isn't good enough. And, and and do you think too that playing the the semi final same venue just pretty much straight after was it was a good thing straight after that result? It was kind of like a, let's just keep it going. Hundred, hundred percent. I think if we did that, if we had that result earlier or something, and then we're waiting two, three, four weeks. You kind of forget about that. Maybe the buzz you had of that game, or yeah. the the way the fans felt, where you, you knew it was the last game you played. This is this is what we did. This is how we did it. So yeah, I think thankfully the way it was set up, it worked out perfect for us. That we the confidence from the previous result, yeah. and it was direct relation to the game we're about to play. So it gave us a lot of confidence. Absolutely. And and then of course we came we come back to Gosford, twenty thousand and fifty nine people fill in the stadium. Um I, I say it repeatedly and maybe I'm totally biased, but a, a packed out um, you know, industry group stadium is is one of the best sites there is in Australian football. Yeah. It's just the atmosphere is electric. You must I know I was speaking to a few of the boys, they felt it in the warm up, but coming out of that tunnel, they get those flame machines going which was great because it was bloody freezing that night but it must have <laughs> felt, you must have i've said to a few of the boys you must have felt it the atmosphere before you saw it right yeah 100 percent. I, I agree with the warm-up thing sort of when you warm up on a normal match day it's sort of yeah. you probably you got about 30 percent of people in there who's coming yeah. and because it was so packed it already felt like the game no normal game was about oh, to kick yeah. off and we, we just we're about to, we're about to do up so when we get out there and we can sort of, we're in the tunnel, we can sort of hear the commentator, like the announcer talking and yeah. the music about to play. You can hear cheers already before we're coming out. And I think, yeah. yeah, just the crowd before we even kicked off was electric and, and confidence boosting. And yeah, we, we took that into that game. Oh, absolutely. And as I said, I mean, you know, I said to a number of people, you know, being there since year one, we've had those attendances of, 1500 2000 and it's just like you know a bait to yourself kind of thing but to to, to see that place is packed and, and i know the membership drives are um uh, are going as we speak it's all kicked off and seeing your face all over the place mate very much the poster boy <laughs> at the moment is that is modeling the next part of your career mate or are you going to just stick to football well, i'll stick to football i might do a bit of radio modeling but that's about it <laughs> Well, you're more, more than welcome to join us on any time, that's for sure, mate. Um, so after that game, now, one thing that I sort of, I know there was excitement after the game, lots of cheering. I mean, the crowd stuck around. But in talking to a lot of you guys afterwards, there was still very much, we still got a game to play. There was very much this, we're happy, we're, we're here. But even straight after the game, no one was getting carried away with themselves. There was still that, we got a job to do. Is that something that you guys spoke about? Was it just a natural thing that you felt after the game? Uh, I I think it might have been a natural thing because uh, ambitions at the start of the year was to to win it all. So I think yeah. when we got ourselves one step away, sort of why why sort of take your eye off it? Why yeah. 
why not put all of it and concentrate on it all? So I think, yeah, we're definitely excited about the win and yeah, definitely buzzing about it. But I think everyone's objective still was this is not what we this is not what our goal was. Our goal was to win it all. Exactly, and I know. I know you guys went up and, and stayed in, you know, Parramatta, you know, the, the game or day or two before the game. Did you sleep well? Is it one of those things that I just didn't sleep for two, three days? Because I know that was probably my story. I didn't really sleep before the game. How, how was it for <laughs> you guys? It was, was it just the build up or was it, no, we're, we're all, we've got this under control? Nah, to be fair, it didn't, it wasn't, it felt like a normal game, but I think the buzz and vibe off everyone was, it was pretty casual, like, it's, this is what we've sort of been training for, playing for. Yeah. Why, why think of it anything more? So, when you're chilling at the hotel and it, yeah, you still sort of get the same vibes if you're away on a normal match day. And yeah. I think that really helps for us. We're quite a, a young, a young team. So, if we had people stressing and the vibe is, is sort of going differently, yeah. I'm not sure how we would have reacted. So the yeah. fact that it stayed the same and, yeah. and yeah, it made people feel comfortable even if they were nervous. Yeah, I think it was a real positive for us. Yeah. And the, and the start of the game too, I mean, the atmosphere was fantastic. Well and truly the numbers there in our favour in the, in the stands as well. The Yellow Army were making their noise and, and and fans who probably hadn't been through a game for a while, we were packed in there as well. And yeah, the, the noise was just incredible. It The, the occasion was big and, and we stood up to it. Just again, walking out into that sort of environment, was it, this is ours, we're just not going to let this one go? Yeah, I think unfortunately in Melbourne City's favour, uh, we sort of got all the advantages they were technically meant to get based on what we've all heard. But yeah. I'm not, I'm not complaining. But Absolutely. yeah, you you know when three quarters of the crowd is cheering for the Mariners and you have got one yeah. small section for City and yeah. half half a thing you do all right is getting cheered and, and celebrated. It's sort of you you kind of feel like it's going to be a good day regardless if that makes yeah. sense. Whether you play well or not, you know. It's going to be an enjoyable. And I remember when we scored, I think the fifth goal. Yep. I believe it was like, and then the fans started singing "We Are Champions." Yep. Like eighty-six minutes. I remember just stopping still for a second yep. and having a look around. I remember thinking about ninety percent of this stadium's absolutely singing that. It got a bit of goosebumps during the during the oh, game absolutely. about that. Yeah, I mean, I, was I remember slipping down, second. looking around. I was going to say that, in the, especially in the set, because half time, I mean, it's 2 1, it's still anybody's game. They came out and, you know, full on 15, 20 minutes, second half, it was a battle. But 3 1, 4 1, fight, to, to me personally, it just felt surreal. It was almost like you don't win grand finals 5 6 1. Like, what's, what's going on with this? But it allowed you guys to, I guess, near the end of the game, just to go, wow, just check this out. It wasn't like it was, it was close at that stage. It gave you that opportunity, right? Yeah, I think when it was 2-1, like, the, all the fans were cheering, but there was still that little bit of maybe not nervousness, but worry if they get one back. And then when it got 3-1, there was still a bit of tension. Yeah. And then 4-1, it sort of calmed it a little bit, but it was still yeah. like, don't let them get one. So when we got the fifth one, everyone went berserk and the crowd was going crazy. It sort of, I think at that moment when I was singing, it was sort of like a realisation, yeah. we all know we've done this. Yeah. We all know we've, we're grand final, we're champions. Absolutely. And we and we all know, you know, Monty very much, you know, straight line, hard edge, coach to the when do you think he thought we'd won the game or did he was he like six one, there's still two minutes to go. We've got to play this one out. What do you reckon he would have been like? Uh, I think he'll tell us that he was he's six one, we sort of get more, but <laughs> I think maybe I, I I think when the fifth one went in as well, that's yeah. sort of that's when I had the feel, feeling yeah, we've done this. I think on the fourth goal, there was still that. You still thought, we've done this, but you can't switch off. But yeah, yeah when the fifth goal went in, I reckon that's when he, he calmed down. And yeah. and you could see sort of the people behind him, they all start, they're all, they, they start gathering even when it's only 5-1 and 4-1. So yeah. I think they already believed it too. Oh, that's sensational. And of course, as, as I mentioned at the start, like after the game, um, I saw you come over to, to grab your... That the family, little Niz on the back of the shirt, that was awesome as well. And it, it just must be, I mean, we mentioned at the start about family, but to be able to involve them, like even when we're lifting the trophy, the families are there, the staff, it's just, it just typifies what this club is about, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it does. It shows that we all understand and know that 
we're not just making ourselves proud and we're not just accomplishing things by ourselves. It's everyone who's ever had part in our life. And yeah. and the the joy and excitement and feeling we get is shared amongst not just the players, but the families, and then not just the families, the fans. And yeah. I think everyone sort of believes that we are we are united and that we are we're family and I think that's it's definitely true. I think it it goes from the fans down through the club, down through us and yeah, I think there's not many there's not anyone in that team who probably wouldn't put their body on the line for anyone 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 else really. Absolutely. And totally and the and the depth we had off the bench, I've said that a few times too. You know, everyone who came on just played their part and and you know, it was just a total, you know, group effort from uh, as you said, players, staff, supporters, the whole lot. Um, got to ask you too, have you ever, you know, run into Graham Arnold's car or done something bad to the guy to not get any more green and gold shirts? Because I know, I think you've played, was it three, was it three times in the under 23s? I think from memory, um, what, what's going on? Because to me, you're one of the first guys picked and I just never seem, it never seems to happen. <laughs> what's going on with that, mate? Oh, look, I think especially one of the, one of the more depth positions is in the midfield, probably midfield and centre backs, to be honest. But uh, look, I'm I'm just playing footy, and if it works out, it works out. But yeah, it's an ambition of mine, and I'm going to keep pushing for it. Absolutely. And yeah, I'm not. I'm going to keep making sure that I, I get the, the get the course to get me here, or, yeah. or making sure that there's at least pressure on his door to make the decision. I think. Exactly. Uh, you get a bit of hype around you and it, it's hard to say no so I just need to keep building on that and yeah giving him no reason to say he shouldn't be in it absolutely a very a very diplomatic and solid answer Josh is a fantastic <laughs> job mate well, well done with that <laughs> <laughs> um, and finally mate I mean we would we would love to see you playing for the Mariners for the next 20 25 years you know Sean get the checkbook out do what you've got to do but in your heart and I know how much you love the Mariners and that but is there a desire to Go overseas. I mean, we know Nick Dar's just headed over to Sunderland um, as an example. Is that is that something that is something that's burning away a little bit? Uh, a little bit. Like I see a lot of players that are coming through the Mariners are getting opportunities overseas and getting transfers. And yep. yeah, like I would, I personally would love to put myself in a challenge overseas, not necessarily not necessarily in the A League because yeah. oh, we wouldn't I let think... that happen, mate. Don't worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think once I, I get my opportunity in Europe, I think it would be easier to keep progressing. I just kind of uh, need that opportunity to the first opportunity sort of thing. You get your first job, you need everyone says, "Where's your work experience?" I just need that first job to to yeah. sort of do that. But yeah. look, I have I do have ambitions to go to to Europe, especially and, and try and challenge myself and and do well and honestly challenge my lifestyle to learn a new language, be somewhere where. I, I probably wouldn't experience without without football. So, yeah. yeah, I would love to do that if I got the opportunity. But Absolutely. I'm a mariner in the A League. Absolutely, mate. And uh, we won't let you go without a struggle. But I know we would wish you well. Should that time come, and probably ten years down the track, we'll reconsider that sort of thing going on. So, that's <laughs> yeah. mate, uh, thanks heaps for uh, for spending some time with us today. It's been uh, an absolute pleasure chatting to you. Um, all the best in enjoying the rest of uh, the off season. Um, I'm chatting to Bryce very soon, mate. So I'll send you through what the, the regime's going to be so you can start working on the preseason <laughs> and uh, get, getting into that, mate. But uh, all the best for it and we'll uh, we'll catch up with you again in the off-season. No, I appreciate you having me on and thank you, everyone. No worries, mate. Take care. And that brings us to the end of our show for today. Massive thank you once again to Sean Millicamp, to Storm Roo, and also to Josh Nisbet for uh, giving us some of your time for a bit of a chat on the show. We greatly appreciate it. I'm sure we will catch up with you all again very, very shortly. Once again, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, we kindly invite you to do so. Hit that button in the bottom corner. It'll take you to where you need to be. Don't forget to hit that notification bell and also to give the video a nice big thumbs up. That helps other people find us and we need to spread the word about the Central Coast Mariners, surely. It's got to be a good thing, right? Thanks once again to sticking around uh, right to the very end. Episode three of our end of season specials. We'll just keep on having end of season specials until we start the preseason, right? 
it'll be something like that, I'm sure. But no, there'll be an episode three uh, coming to you very, very soon. Look forward to bringing that one to you already. It's been a massive night. More ahead. Let's get it all moving again. It's the Marty Mariner Show.